Hey there YouTube. I've been meaning to put together a new video showing off text to video and really the new capabilities of the newest model scope upgrades. And while I say upgrades, it's really that there's now fine tuning available. And as you can see, they've eliminated the watermark completely with these new models. So today I'm going to cover everything as it sits right now. I'm hesitant to call anything I do a tutorial anymore because this just moves so quickly it's going to be hard to really keep up. But I'll show you what's available now and how it looks and you'll get an idea of how it works. I'll go ahead and start with the basics. Of course this is an extension that I'm using within the Automatic 1111 project. If you want to use the extensions tab and install it from there you can just look for it under model scope text to video as you can see right here. And if you want to install it using the GitHub desktop method, you can check out my other video for the methodology. But of course, this is the same place. You'd have to come to grab the link anyway. So you want to start with that if you didn't already. And once you've upgraded to the newest version, you should see a few changes. First, you're going to see that they've added a model selector. I've got a couple of different models to pick from, and I'll show you where I got them from. It's actually no big secret. They put a how do I install, where to get help, and how to help section. Now, I still haven't even messed with Video Crafter. The link for that is right here. You can check that out for yourself if you want to, but I'm going to focus today on Model Scope. If you check out the list of the prominent fine tunes, you're going to see a few different options. And you're going to see some underwater, creepy tentacle things here. And there's a different, higher res version, which is called Potot 1 here. And you can see that it was trained at 1024 by 576. So rather than these much smaller videos, you could potentially output something much larger if you have the hardware for it, and we're going to get to that in a minute. Now, one of the first things that I'll mention here is you're going to need a few different files. You're going to need this vqgan autoencoder.path file and this configuration.json file, and you can grab those right here, and I would suggest you do that first. And basically, wherever these files end up, you want to have four different files together, the two for the model and then these two that we're going to grab first. So again, autoencoder and configuration.json are where you're going to start, now, I already had these from my previous video, but if you didn't already, you can grab them from here. We're also going to go ahead and open up this other link to grab this Excel model. And you can see that it's a bin and a path file, so we're going to go ahead and grab those as well. Those are fairly large downloads, about 5 gigabytes altogether. And when you add it to the 2.5 gigabytes of the autoencoder.path file, when we end up setting up these subfolders for each of the individual models, they end up being about 8 or 9 gigabytes apiece. So just keep that in mind if space is an issue. Just so you get an idea of how I have it set up, it's my web UI folder, and then the models folder, and then text to video, which is a folder you have to create, but it seems like you can make as many sub-model folders as you like. I had the original one that I just put here, and then for the model scope V2, I grabbed the low res here, and then the 2XL here. Inside each of these model folders, and you can see I just called this one V2XL, you'll see the four different files I talked about. And just to be clear, I just had these here as an extra. I copied and pasted these over and over again into the different folders. So that's not necessary. You don't have to do that. So the GitHub links directly to this Excel model. But if you check out this guy's main page, his name is Spencer Sterling. And there's a number of different zero scope models that he's put together. And while this 576 one is the one that I was talking about and the one that I personally use, there's also another thing that he's put together here specifically for Automatic 1111. And if you check out the files and versions, I think it's basically just set up so you can download it a little bit easier. But just to be clear, I didn't have any personal experience with this one, so I can't really say anything about that. It's really exciting to see that this extension is set up to support a bunch of different models, so hopefully this list continues to grow. Don't forget to grab that Potop model if you want to try something a little bit different. And there's also, it looks like there's a cartoon or an anime based one here that I didn't really try myself, but feel free to drop some comments if you give that a shot. Anyway, let's take a look at the stable diffusion side of things and when we actually go to generate. The settings you're seeing on the screen are the settings that I used, and I'll be honest, I'm kind of pushing the limit of the 3080 Ti that I'm using to create a 36 frame video graphic. It's not a lot, and I'm going to have to upgrade to get some more video RAM if I'm going to try to do more of this type of stuff at home. I don't have any personal pointers on different benchmarks or anything other than what I've kind of fiddled around with, but I'll suffice it to say that you need a lot of video memory to really get good use out of this. If you're wondering why some of the examples on screen look a lot smoother than what you're seeing over here, I just used frame interpolation after the fact. I used a free program called Flow Frames, and I'll grab a link for that and put it in the description for you guys as well. But the workflow that I used for these, for better or worse, because not all of them are great, I know some of them are downright terrifying, based on the output that I got, it's really hard to say what these things are trained on. 
Just based on the fact that it used an octopus in the demonstration, I used a lot of underwater stuff to test originally, so I did get a lot of fish frames that look decent. It seems to handle eels and tentacles and things like that pretty well. But, I mean, yeah, I'm saying pretty well. You can see for yourself, it's definitely not realistic. If you're curious about the workflow that I used for any of these, you can see I used a lower resolution here, 512 wide by only 384. And then similar to image to image, I went over to video to video, and I used the output as input. So my original man running became this original man running, which is obviously different. And depending on how much you mess with this denoising slider, it can be very, very different. When I did the eyeballs, for example, I originally started with very little denoising, and I was able to get some pretty decent results that resembled a human eye. But when I wanted to start making it look a little bit more wild, a little bit more alien or monster-like, I just ended up cranking up the denoising slider and then changing the prompt. It didn't take very many tests before I started getting some really cool results. Now, of course, when you're outputting these things, and just like when you're using image to image with pretty heavy denoising, a lot of the individual frames, they don't match up perfectly. And that's where frame interpolation comes in. This is where part of the magic of deform comes from, is it kind of fades from one frame to another by adding frames in between. So it's optional. You could use flow frames for something like that if you want to download it. Though you could probably do this through just deform if you wanted to, and you already had it, for example. You could drop in a video that's only like 15 frames long because you created it in like text to video, but you can use this thing to make it, you know, 135 frames a second if you really wanted to. I wouldn't recommend that, by the way, but you get the idea. By adding more frames in between and kind of fading in between them, you can get a smoother graphic than you did before. And that's what you're seeing here. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little first look at the version 2 of the model scope models. I wanted to show you what I had as soon as I had something to show you. But obviously these things take a while to render out, so I've been burning up my video card putting everything together. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you haven't already. And as always, thank you for watching.